solicitation or offer to sell securities can take place during this period. The only thing that can really happen is that the issuer can uh, arrange with underwriters or brokers uh, for representation in the sale uh, of the securities. Uh, now there are limited exceptions there uh, for the underwriter to undertake some, some limited uh, advertising or the issuer themselves to undertake uh, some limited advertising just to make people aware that an issuance is coming. But again, it has to fall short of anything that would uh, be considering an offering. Uh, now, this introduces the standard of something we call conditioning the market. Now, if the advertisement has a substantial impact, uh, that is, it creates uh, a level of interest or inquiry that is commensurate with uh, actually offering or soliciting the sale of securities, then it could be deemed a violation of, this, of the restriction on offering uh, the sale of securities during this period. So you have to be uh, very careful during, during this temporary advertising uh, period. Now there are a couple of um, exceptions to this. Um, one is for emerging growth companies, which is a designation under the, uh, the Jobs Act, um, and it seeks to allow these startup companies to seek capital early in the um, early in the growth stage and it pretty much eliminates that whole conditioning the market requirement so it's there's basically no limitation there on the advertisement uh, or that can be put out to uh, make people aware that a, that an offering is coming there's also a section 5b uh, exception that lets companies uh, openly send a written or oral communication, again, somewhat of an advertisement uh, about the securities offering to uh, qualified institutional buyers um, or accredited investors. And this is an uh, option for um, brokerage firms or other uh, investment banks, for example, that could serve in the uh, underwriter process to openly communicate with prospective uh, purchasers of larger blocks of the securities uh, during this phase. So that's one of those advantages, again, of going through uh, a broker or, or a uh, underwriter <clears throat> in this uh, public offering process. Uh, another one is the, the public company uh, exception. Uh, public companies have to continue reporting through this process, so if an issuance is coming up, uh, the forward-looking uh, disclosure statements need to report this uh, so investors can make uh, timely and informed decisions with regard to trading the securities, etc. Because uh, generally an issuance like this would uh, affect the securities price in some way, so it's something that needs to be uh, disclosed so they can act upon. And then lastly, uh, well-known seasoned investors, that is above the uh, companies above the $700 million uh, uh, thre market capitalization threshold, they have a special exemption that allows them to um, use what's called a free writing prospectus and now it, to uh, send out to potential investors uh, prior to the filing of the registration statement. Now the actual prospectus itself has to be filed with the SEC and it has to be approved uh, before it can be sent out but again this gives the well-known seasoned investor a jump in the process for the issuance of securities because generally they've gone through an issuance before and this is a subsequent uh, round of issuance that uh, again it's just adding to the uh, existing disclosures um, that have that have already happened so again for a well-known season invest institutional issuer uh, this is going to be yet another exemption there from this prohibition or together from the prohibitions that exist during the pre filing registration process step.